All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and the last time we were in here, we fed mac and cheese on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and check on that and see how it's doing. We also took the bubble wrap off to try and dry out the bin a little bit. And then finally, we are going to see how that's doing, and we're gonna give them a sugary feeding. So this paper right here was our previous top covering, and I'm just gonna put that in when we feed. So let's go ahead and dig right in here. Now, as I said in my previous video, I did this under duress, feeding them the mac and cheese, because I don't really want to feed dairy or meat in my worm bins, although the worms will eat it, and it's not harmful to them, it can really smell. So we will see if I smell any odors, and if they ate that pasta and the cheese sauce that was on it. And right now, it's looking like... I don't see any yet. I do see some seeds of a cucumber slice that we put in there. There's a seed right there and a bunch of worms. So they don't seem to mind it at all. We also put in some strawberries and we put in a lot of bedding. This was kind of the last time we're gonna put in a bunch of bedding. So I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing a bunch of mites. I don't know if you can see them right here on this piece of cardboard, but I'll just hold still and maybe do a time-lapse. All right, so we've got a little bit of overabundance of mites, and that is probably because it's a little wet, and I think pasta might have also had something to do with that. So the worm bin dried out just a little bit, but it's still kind of moist here. I'm going to show you. Usually I can squeeze it together, and it'll just kind of crumble apart, but it's still staying formed, so it's still a little bit too wet to my liking. And this is not unusual. Um, as your bin gets older, you get more and more castings, and the castings really retain moisture, which is one of the reasons it's good for seed starting mixes. So I'm not surprised that it's still wet, but I wanna make sure that I dry it out a little bit and try and just kind of prevent the mites from getting overpopulated in here. Mites are not a problem in a bin. It's just when they get population blooms that you know, you may have a little bit of a situation in your bin that's kind of out of whack or more advantageous to the mites rather than the worms. So let's go ahead and keep airing this out and seeing how the rest of the bin is doing. And look at that, just lots of worms all over. Looks like they ate all the food and then they started to come through the other parts of the bin. And it's been 10 days since we were in here. I think 125 total since we started this bin. And we've got all kinds of good worms, a really fat, thick one right here. And then we've got a little baby one right there. And I'm actually seeing a pot worm or two, which are really, really tiny white ones right here. An increase of pot worms is also another sign that maybe the bin is being overfed or in this case, probably too much moisture. Let's go ahead and go over here on this side. And wow, lots of, lots of worms. So even though we fed on this side, they have come over here to this side and maybe they're snacking on whatever was left over from the previous, previous feeding. So yeah, lots of great worms. I started this with 600. So I think that is close to the carrying capacity of the bin itself. So the population probably won't go much more than that, but we'll see because I do see some babies in here right there, a little tiny baby. I love it. All right, let's get to the edges and see how they are doing and then we'll set up for our feeding zone now we've got a special feeding that we're going to do in here i cleaned out my pantry or i should say we cleaned out the pantry the executive producer and i wow real quick <laughs> check it out i love seeing all that look at those worms they are just beautiful beautiful worms and i'm seeing a little bit less mites over here so that could also be why the worms are congregated over here kind of trying to avoid the might bloom that I saw over here. Yeah, so anyway, we cleaned out our pantry and oh my gosh, do we have a lot of stuff to feed the worms, unfortunately. We're so used to moving every three years that we've been a little neglectful in cleaning out our pantry because we've been in the same house for the last six. So let's go ahead and get ourselves set up and start our feeding zone and that will be on the right here. Let me go ahead and make a area over here and I have been corrected by the executive producer. We've been in our latest house for eight years. So I think the oldest thing we found in the pantry was six years old. So that may have been why six was on my mind, but let's go ahead and create an area that we can put our feeding zone in. And we'll start with a little bit of shredded cardboard. 
check out that tiny baby right there. You can even see little things inside of its body, like where it's eaten, and then it's gonna poop out. That is amazing. So in goes just a little bit of cardboard shreds, and that's because we are at 125 days. I will probably harvest this bin at around 170 days, so I don't wanna add too much more bedding. So here's what we had in mind for our feeding. On one side, I have some stale marshmallows, and on the other side, I have some dates that have probably been in the pantry for about a year. I think we were making granola with them, but they are pretty stiff and sugary. So we're gonna try both of these and I'm gonna do a whole one and I've cut up some dates. So first in goes the marshmallows. I'll just set them on the one side there. And here are the dates that I cut up. So I'm just gonna arrange them over here just kind of in a row or even on top of each other, no big deal. And this side, especially down low here, is pretty dry. So hopefully with this bedding that is really wet, we'll be able to add some moisture to the marshmallows, which are basically just puffed up sugar, and the dates, which are very sugary and they have a little bit of fiber in them, or probably a lot of fiber in them. And then we'll add one whole date right here. So we'll see how they do with this feeding, if they like it, and we'll see if the date, if the uh, mites also like it. I'm not sure if mites like sugar or not, but let's go ahead and set up the rest of the feeding. So first thing is we'll add a little bit of pulverized oats. I'm almost done with the original two pounds that I had, but <laughs> unfortunately I found a little bit more. So those pulverized oats are a food source, and then this little bit of coffee, the spent coffee I'm putting in here is also a food source for them. And finally, I've pulverized some more eggshells and they use this for grit. So I'll put a little bit of eggshells in there for them as well. And now we'll put some of this old bedding in here. Now, last time I had a paper towel and I kind of wiped my hands down when I had macaroni all over it. And the paper towel was gone. When we went through our bedding, I didn't see any of it. So this should also kind of disappear. And it's been in there for a while. So it's got all kinds of microbes for them. So we'll go ahead and bury this up. This will be kind of a deep feeding down below there because I didn't put a lot of bedding, but I'm also putting a bunch of the worms over there. So they're in close proximity to it. So I always like to put a top feeding on. So I'll add some more pulverized oats for them and we'll see how that works out. So in we go with just a light layer of oats. I don't want to bunch it up or get too big of a pile going on it because then it could prevent the worms from getting in because it almost turns to cement if there's too much on there. And the last thing we'll put on is this piece of newspaper, a fresh newspaper. We'll see how long this lasts. This will help keep a little bit of moisture in, but not too much. And it actually will help wick out some of it because I want to try and again, dry this bin out. We are almost to the halfway full mark and this is a three gallon bin. So about a gallon and a half of castings. So the bin is doing real well. I expect to be able to harvest this in maybe two months or less. So I'm pretty happy with it. I hope your bins are doing well. I hope you're having a great day. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.